Hey gang, we are in Leavenworth, Kansas, and here on the left is the very famous Leavenworth Prison, which was established in 1827 by a Colonel Henry Leavenworth, which it was upon this site that he chose to build a fort. And there it is. Look at that. Look at that architecture. Wow. Sitting up on the hill, it looks very intimidating. You can see the, see how old that is. 1875, it was, it was chosen as to be converted from a fort to a military prison and initially housed, well, initially housed about 300 prisoners, but now look at this. This is absolutely gigantic. We're going to look around. Now, I'm, I'm just driving in here, never been here before, and I'm after the cemetery, of course. I see a, I see a gate up here. Look at that guard tower. Look at that. That is really amazing. I, I read that the cemetery is fenced outside the, the gates here. Oh, this is just uh, amazing. Now, there are some famous, famous bad men that have been through here. Look at that guard tower. Let's zoom in on that. Reminds me of Alcatraz. Look at that. You can just imagine the guys up there with the rifle. Look at the spotlight on top. Very historic. And look at all the barbed wire. It is quite intimidating. All right, let's drive around and see if we can find out where the cemetery is. Definitely don't want to go in there. <laughs> A lot of signs here. That road there leads directly to the back of the prison. I think I found the cemetery here. Up here. I think we're allowed to. I did speak to the man up front, and it's not that I got permission, but he, he told me there's we're about where the cemetery is, and I think we can go go check it out. Pretty eerie here. And there is a concentration of crows here. Wouldn't you go figure? All right. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think actually that's a hawk. Looks like a red-tailed hawk. Well, the grave I'd like to show you and I'd like to see is that of Carl Panzram, one of the worst people that's ever been alive. He spent a lot of time here at Leavenworth. And yes, this is the graveyard. I can tell by the I can tell by these little plaques. This is kind of indicative, and the names are on here. No dates. Look at that. Just very, very basic. Here's one for James G. Brown. No birth date, 10-13, 1942. These people are forgotten, as they, many of them maybe should be, I don't know. That's up to you. Lee Skaggs, 9-12-42. Well, this whole hillside here I can see is 
filled with these will walk along and I will tell you a little bit about Mr. Pantsram as we go. Bugs Moran is also buried here who was part of the Northside gang and he was the target of the St. Valentine's Day massacre. Bugs Moran, by the way, was the man who kind of invented the drive-by Tommy gun spray the place. And he ended up in this cemetery too, but I looked on find a grave and his marker I don't even think has a plate on it. But a very interesting story to say the least. A lot of these here, here's Martin Biglin, 42941, and none of them have birth dates. Isn't that interesting? None of them have birth dates. So Carl Pansram was born in Minnesota, East Grand Forks, and he had eight siblings. And by the age of five or six, he was already a liar and a thief. And that would be nothing as he grew older. He just got meaner and meaner. In 1899, he was in juvenile court on the charge of being drunk and disorderly. I think he was nine or ten years old. Can you imagine? In 1903, at the age of 11, he stole some cake, apples, and a gun from a neighbor's home. And that was kind of the last straw. I guess many things have been happening, and his parents sent him to the Minnesota State Training School. And it was while he was there that he was beaten, tortured, and raped by staff members in what attendees would say a place called the paint shop because the kids would leave there painted, their butts painted with bruises and blood. He hated the place so much he decided to burn it down and did so in 1905 in July of the summer. Did not get caught. He was uh, paroled in 1906 from this Red Wing Training School, as it was called, after stealing money from his mother's pocketbook. He had, that's what he was in for. He finally got paroled from there. And by his teens, he was an alcoholic, and he was in trouble, and burglary, theft. And he, he was just on the, on the road. And speaking of on the road, he was basically a hobo. That's how he would get around the country and travel he did. He did end up in the Montana State Reform School not long after. And along with an inmate, a fellow inmate named Jimmy Benson, they went on a string of burglaries, robberies, arsons in the Midwest. 1907, he was 15 years old. He was drunk in a saloon in Montana, and that's when he decided to join the U.S. Army. That didn't last long. He was convicted of larceny, and he was here at Fort Leavenworth, welcomed in the disciplinary barracks. So that was his first taste here of this place he could probably call a good part of his life home. It was in 1920 that he started his murder spree. And I can't even tell all the stories. I, I, there's no way, there's, the list is way too long, but just to touch on some of it, he, in 1920, he burglarized the William Taft Mansion in New Haven, Connecticut, which was the home of William Howard Taft. 
because he held him responsible directly, personally, for his imprisonment here at Leavenworth. Pansram had this just, he was one of these revenge guys who would never forget. And if you did something against him, boy, oh boy. Look at that, no, no birth date. What do they care? These are just uh, mostly cons who died. There were some people executed here, not, not a ton. I think it was Pansram and, you know, this could be, for all I know, this could be Bugs Moran. I know it's unmarked. So he caught a ship to South Africa where he started, he, he actually worked as a foreman for an oil rig in Angola. What do you think he did though, after, shortly thereafter? He got mad at somebody and burned it down. The whole rig, just out of spitefulness. And while he was there, he assaulted and killed a boy who was only 11 years old. This, this would be kind of a common theme. He would just uh, kill and, and molest and assault kids, boys. He had said in a confession years later that the boy's brains were coming out of his ears when he had left him. And that made him think that no one could be deader than dead in that kind of shape. On another incident, he hired a boat, and there were six guys that were rowing the boat, helping. And what did he do? He shot them all, once they were out to sea with a Luger pistol, through their bodies as they came in to the crocodiles. That must have been quite a sight. There was much more bad stuff. Like I said, I can't, I can't even go into it. I thought this might have been him. This is Carl Henderson. No birth date, 1935. He was finally captured on August 30th, 1928 in Baltimore for a Washington, D.C. burglary. He was stealing a radio and jewelry from the home of a dentist. During his interrogation, he started confessing. He seemed to be proud of all these really bad crimes. He confessed, among other things, to killing three boys Earlier, just that month, one in Salem, one in Connecticut, and a 14-year-old newsboy in Philadelphia. He was so mad, he also told the people that were interrogating him that he had planned mass murders. Here's some more unmarked. You know, you gotta wonder which one is Bugs Moran. Bugs Moran is here. He was literally going to poison a city's water supply or try to capture a British warship and scuttle it, blame it on the Americans and start a, a war, maybe even a world war. He was basically a complete nut. He was finally hanged here. He couldn't wait to die. He was finally hanged here September 5th, 1930. He was running to the gallows like, in fact, there was an incident just before that, it, it, well, not just before that, but that led up to that execution if everything he did wasn't bad enough. When he came here for the final time, he said, if anybody messes with me, I'm going to kill him. 
first guy that messes with me, I'm going to hatch a plan and kill him, and he did. I think it was in the laundry, the laundry foreman was tease him and taunt him. Why I wouldn't know, why you would want to taunt a guy like that, but he did. And Panzram waited for his chance, I think he got a pipe, and he beat the guy's brains out. And for that, he was sentenced to death and finally hanged. Here. When he was asked for any last words, he responded, and by the way, this is unconfirmed. Yes, hurry it up, you Hoosier bastard. I could kill a dozen men while you're screwing around. His grave number here is 31614. So, I'm going to look around for his grave here. I'm going to walk the rows, and it's a little bit of ground to cover here. And if I can find it, we'll tune it back in. And if I don't find it, then I won't, I won't tune back in. This is going to be it right here from Leavenworth Prison in Leavenworth, Kansas. I'll see you all later.